So if you're thinking of buying or selling a home, you've had to have noticed that the markets may seem a bit odd, perhaps even quiet. Remember, this is the busiest time that we're getting into the housing market is the month of June. So to understand the market that we're going into and the market that we've just exited, which is the month of May, we have to take a peek at the past market performance. We're also going to share the three biggest mistakes a buyer can make in today's market. So welcome to the SoFlo Real Estate Show. Ask Athena and Julie anything. On today's podcast, we're going to... De- dig deep into you know is the market on pause is it losing its group what's going on uh, my name is athena chalikas barocas i'm a top producer and award-winning realtor with coldwell banker here in sunny south florida my co-host julie dinda of radius financial group is here with us today as well so julie welcome to the soplo real estate show great to see you today Great to see you, too. I'm really excited about today's topic. Uh, on the mortgage side, my clients are asking about the market and, wh- and whether they should wait. Yeah, I get it. But what are they waiting for, Julie? Now is the time to buy. So tell me, what are they waiting for? I get it. The thing that the headline, you know, the thing is, is I think the headlines are confusing the buyers. Home prices are going to continue to rise, and we have no idea when interest rates are going to be brought down by the Fed. Uh, The Fed has signaled maybe one price reduction this summer, maybe one after the election. The challenge is that inflation is not all the sweet spot, and the Fed is being cautious. So at this moment, the mortgage rate is the rate. (laughs) You know, the rate is the rate. True. You know, inflation is not at the sweet spot and the feds are really are being cautious. They have been signaling. I'm going to be cautious since the end of last year. But, you know, the other factor we have to look at is employment and and the feds not comfortable with the employment rate either. So, you know, buyers, I don't know. Wait, wait for what? Um, The market is not one that's going to say, hey, let's wait and see strategy. Actually, Julie, in my 20 years of selling real estate, the wait and see strategy has never been effective. (laughs) Never works. Never works. Never works. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about the month of May. What are you feeling? So the month of May, um, it felt like a stagnant market market for housing. Uh, While there were no statistics as of like just yet, uh, what we're seeing today is homes are on the market longer, seller offering uh, price drops, sellers are offering incentives, um, the number of originating loans have decreased. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been an interesting, but very, very quiet. And here's a great example. I offered to host an open house. It's a beautiful home in a great area on the golf course. Absolutely beautiful. You know, we have so many days on market. So we were getting past the days where, you know, the seller's feeling comfortable, the agent's feeling comfortable. I hosted the open house, full marketing. Neighbors knew about it. I even knocked on a few doors and invited the, you know, the closest neighbors. Guess how many people showed? It was last Friday night, five to seven. Guess how many people showed, Julie? Five. One. (laughs) Wow. One you didn't even, person. You didn't even get the show. nosy neighbor that wants to know how they did their kitchen. <laughs> no nosy neighbor. I got nobody. One person. So, you know, it's hard. It's hard. So the house has been on the market over 40 days. And really what we would call it in real estate, no market interest. You know, I yeah. spoke with a colleague in the office over the weekend as well, who has a couple of listings. And asked her, you know, how's her listings going? Still there, not moving. She asked me, you ready for this, Julie? She asked me, where are all the buyers? You know, where are all the buyers? Why aren't they out there in the market? So, Julie, what are you seeing on the mortgage side? So on the mortgage side, I think, you know, we're definitely getting, we're in South Florida, so we're definitely getting the employment that's coming in. I I think we're seeing a little less of those those uh, South Florida second homes 
um, and those Airbnb investments, um, they're maybe waiting for the market to stabilize a little bit. You know, obviously the, you know, you're moving in, you're, you know, people are moving, p school's about to start. You know, I, I feel like it's going to be picking up, but I think for the month of, you know, May, that's probably, you know, why it was the way that it was. It's just, you know, everyone's getting situated with their lives before school and college and all that jazz. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You know, month of May is always graduations and celebrations and Mother's Day. And, you know, there's a lot packed in those 30 days of May. I mean, a lot packed in. And June, you know, June is when we start to hit the peak in the selling season here, especially Correct. in South Florida. June, July, August slows down. We have another peak in September, October. And then we start to slow down again as we enter into our traditional holiday Holidays. season. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's an interesting time. But what I want to do is let's change our focus from what we sure. feel and look at some statistics from the Florida Association of Realtors. Um, I'd like to start off with really the county, and I'm going to pick Broward County. We're both in Broward County, so I thought that would be a really good place for us to start. And then, you know, dive into a specific city just to see what, you know, um, the statistics are. So since we just finished the month of May, we don't have statistics for May, right, Julie? Correct. <laughs> no. So we have to use the most recent, which is going to be April. But April was a very interesting time. So let's compare Florida Association Realtor statistics for the month of April 2024 compared to the same month last year in 2023. So for the entire county of Broward, we saw that the average purchase price was about 10.5% higher than it was last year. So prices are up. Yeah. And that's only in the first four months of the year. In March, however, we were down 14.7%. We were flat December, January, and February. And then last year, May 20 through November 23, we were negative or even closed lower than we did in 2024. So, you know, what we're seeing in the month of May is not unusual, as you said, for the time, but it's also not unusual from what we're seeing trending in the marketplace. So, Julie, um, I think you have a city that you wanted to share with us. What city did you pick and what are some of the stats for that city here in the Broward County? Yeah, let's let's look at the city of Weston. Uh, and then we'll obviously do the same, the period from April 24th versus the April of uh, 2023. Um, your inventory is up. 59%. Uh, that's meaning that the homes are sitting in the market longer, mm -hmm. 3.5 months versus 2.2 months. Um, active homes uh, is up 52%, 163 versus 107 in 2023. Um, pending homes is down 15.4%, um, so about 88 versus the 104. Um, and now the average sales price is up, like you said, 10.6% for 1.2 versus 1.1 or 100, 100K. Yeah. So you know what? Looking at a specific city really tells a story. And that's this specific city. Right. So remember out there, if you have a specific city, reach out. We'll get these stats for you for your own city or your own county. Not a problem. But as we look at the city of Weston, very interesting. I love what you shared. We have more inventory, which means more homes for sale, more active listings out there for buyers to choose from. However, we have more um, we have less homes in contract, so more inventory is sitting out there. And we're really seeing a longer day on market. You said 2.2 months to what was that? 3.5, 3.3? I think it said 3.3, right. Yeah. 3.3. So we've increased a whole month of um, homes sitting on the market. That means it's taking sellers up to 30, 33 days more to sell their home than it did last year at this time. So um, very interesting statistic, and it really does go back to support, you know, is the market on pause from its groove? So, um, you know, what we have to do is we have to continue to monitor the market, but we also have to encourage buyers to, you know, come into the market. So, um, Julie, uh, what type of market are we really experiencing, do you think? So I think right now we're experiencing a market in transition. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's more cautious, 
less flexible. Right. And now let's add the Fed moving in to reduce the interest rate in the upcoming election. They are not looking at reducing the interest rate. Beginning of the year, I think they signal four interest rate reductions. We are yeah. now into June and nothing has happened. They said, maybe we'll do one more. Maybe we'll do one at the end of the year after the election. Um, as a realtor in 20 years in this business, you as a lender for many years and as a realtor, I'm going to make a prediction. We're not going to see a rate drop. Julie, what do you think? No, no you are right. Uh, the macroeconomic layer on top of the granular activity, and we have a housing market of uncertainty. We do have a housing market of uncertainty. So let's turn to the buyers. What does this mean for the buyers out there in the market that are experiencing exactly what we just shared today? Yeah, it means that there's definitely room for conversation. It's not a buyer's market. Sellers are much more reasonable. So, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. So, you know, I agree with you. There is room for conversation. It's not a time to really demand things as a buyer, but it certainly is room now for a conversation. Whereas when we were back in the unicorn years, you know, sellers dictated exactly what they wanted and that was that. But now buyers should feel comfortable in saying to the realtor or to their lender, here's my strategy. What do I need to do? What can I offer? How can we move this forward? So I love that. Um, so what do you think some of the biggest mistakes or the biggest mistake buyers are making today in today's market? So I would say putting off that pre-approval. You know, as part of the home buying process, you know, a lender will look at your finances, they'll figure out why, um, you know, what they're willing to give you for your mortgage. It gives you a good idea of what you can borrow so that you can really wrap your head around that financial side of things before you start looking at homes. So while house hunting can be a lot more fun <laughs> than thinking about your finances, you don't want to do this out of order. You know, you want to make sure you get that pre-approval first. A lot of times people ask me like, oh, but the rate's so high, the rate's so high, the rate's so high. And then once you actually sit down and do the numbers, it's like, okay, so it's an extra $100 a month, you know, or it's an extra $25 a month. It really just depends on what your situation is. Sometimes, you know, if you're a VA, you know, you're a VA or you have a nice FHA opportunity, it might not be that much at all. Yeah, you know, the biggest question I get, and I have to correct my clients, is, Athena, the rate's too high. When do you think the rate's going to come down? Or prices are too high. When do you think home prices are going to come down? The real question they should be asking is, what can I afford and what can I buy? And I think if we start to really help the buyers understand the true narrative or the true question that they should be asking, we can help them move along in today's market and buy the right home. And you're right. Pre-approval, Julie, the number one thing, understand your purchase power, understand your strategy, understand what you can buy in this market. And more importantly, what can you buy in three to five years if this is really not your dream home? So exactly. that pre-approval is so important. Huge. Huge. And, you know, we spoke about what types of pre-approvals are better than other types of pre-approvals. So if you're interested in more information on pre-approvals, pre contact us or go to our library. We have that video there for you as well. Correct. So number two biggest mistake buyers are making today, Julie. I would say holding out for perfection. So while you might have this long list of must-haves and nice-to-haves, you need to be realistic about your home search. Even though your ideal state is you find a home that checks out every single box, you may need to be willing to compromise, especially since that inventory is still low. Plus, a home that has everything you want, that might be too pricey for you. You know, it's true. Right now, the best thing a buyer can do is buy a home they can afford because they can ride the, the wave of appreciation. You know, if you're not getting in the market today, I mean, even Barbara Cochran, who is a renowned real estate um, guru and somebody we all look up to for the most part, she even says, get into a home, get into the duplex, get into the condo, 
just get into a home, buy real estate, buy an investment property, buy a primary. It makes no difference. The best way to build wealth is buying real estate. So just buy something you can afford. And, um, you know, look to the future. Look three years, look five years, look 10 years and see where life takes you. Really what those features are that you absolutely have to have and make a change at that point. Julie, number three, what's the third biggest mistake buyers are making in today's market? I think the third is definitely buying more of the, uh, more of a house than you can afford. You know, um, insurance is going up, everything with today's mortgage rates and home prices. There's no arguing that it's expensive to buy a home. And while it may be tempting to stretch your finances a little bit further than you're comfortable with to make sure you get into the house, you want to Oh, definitely avoid overextending your budget. Make sure you talk to your agent about change, about changing mortgage rates and how and how that actually affects your monthly payment, um, Bankrate offers this advice. Focus on what monthly payment you can afford rather than fixating on the maximum loan amount you qualify for. So just because you can't qualify for a $300,000 loan doesn't mean that you can't comfortably handle the monthly payments that come with it as long as you're fi and with all your other financial obligations. So every borrower's case is different. So factor in that whole financial profile when we're turning, when, when actually determining how much um, that house of that house you can afford. You know, that's a great point. Just because you can borrow a certain amount doesn't mean that you should actually take action on that amount. It's important. It's so important to really understand what that implication is. You know, what is it that you want to do during that three to five years? Do you want to buy an investment property? You have to put your kids through school. You know, it's important not to let your emotions drag you or lead you to buying a house that is not the best purchase for you. And that's why it's so important to work with somebody, a lender, a realtor, that really can be your bouncing board, your sounding board, your strategist, your devil's advocate, because that's what we do. We wanna make sure that you are buying the right house for you in today's market. Yeah, so that's, that's what I would really say. I would just want to add that one more, just to touch on what you said. So as a professional lender, I know when a buyer is going to be successful. And it's when the buyer has hired a professional realtor to guide them. Um, buying a home is, it's just not easy. There are legalities, there's contracts, there's addendums, inspections, title, so much more. So it's really, really important that you, you hire a professional uh, realtor, for sure. Hey, thanks, Julie. I appreciate that. But she's right. You know, real estate, a professional realtor is going to give you professional legal advice, market expertise, support. We're going to save you time, money, and stress. You know, what we're really trying to do is to increase your chance of buying the best home for you in today's market. So, Julie, thank you for that. And, you know, that goes ditto right back to the right lender as well. So, Julie, any thoughts and before we close out? You know, I think I think in this market, you know, get out there, look, you know, you, you might be able to make some movements, make some adjustments. You might be able to sell, you know, there, South Florida has your your value is immediately going to go up the moment you close. So why not go out there, invest in your future, invest in your families? It doesn't cost anything to have a conversation. Nothing. No. No so come conversation, talk. right? <laughs> yeah. Come talk to us. Let us know. And, and, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We are going to continue to do this for a long time. So we are only going to give you advice. If it's not a right time for you, there's not going to be two better people to tell you that you need to wait. We're going to follow up and we're going to talk to you at a later point, but we will tell you if it's ready or if it's not a good time. And that's what we're here for. Yeah, I agree. You know, there's not, um, there's a lot of good professional people out there, realtors, lenders, and, you know, the right one is going to be depending on you, but find somebody that you trust, somebody who you trust to guide you through this process. So Julie, I love that. I love those last thoughts. Thank you for sharing those. 
So to recap, I just want to remind the buyers out there that the three biggest mistakes buyers are making today is not obtaining a pre-approval, holding out for that perfect home, and really buying more than you can afford. Um, you know, Julie and I were working, you know, Julie, thank you for mentioning the last one, working with a professional realtor. I love that one. Maybe it's my favorite, but the top three are very, very important. And the truth is, is that the housing market is always fluid and it's ever changing. So speak to a professional realtor, speak to a professional lender to better understand what your local market looks like. Build a strategy that works best for you. Julie, it's always great to have you here and having you share your expertise on these super hot topics. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. If you'd like more information on the market or simply want to book an appointment to learn how to strategize, have a conversation, go ahead, click the link. And remember to subscribe to the SoFlow Real Estate Show. Have a great week. See you soon. Happy house hunting. <laughs> <laughs> house hunting. <laughs>